Um, I've been around for a while. I've been training for over 19 years. Uh, I've been doing functional strength training for almost the entire time that was uh, that I've been training. The problem is it's just now been one of those things that's been labeled the last five years, and now everybody's kind of jumping on the bandwagon of what functional strength training is and kind of, you know, using that as a tag to define themselves as being different. The problem is now, since everybody's using the tag, it's really not definable. So that's one of the things I want to share with you guys today is hopefully give you a different way of looking at uh, strength training, a uh, different way of looking at uh, preparing athletes for sports, and maybe training the general population. All my friends are the... Uh, a conventional exercise, squat, squat more, and then when you're done with that, squat a little bit more. And for me, I completely changed that modality and what we do with great success. So what we're going to do today is talk about the three training models almost every lifting program is built on. One of these three as a main component, and maybe a little bit of the other ones as an add-on to change a little bit more of the focus. The problems with the powerlifting model is that it basically focuses on three vertical lifts. So all the lifts go up and down, and you train that way in the off-season, and you're developing your strength around making those lifts stronger. The problem is most sports are played in a horizontal fashion. The only upper body lift that they've been perfecting over the years is the bench press, but the, as you guys know, being athletes, we need a lot more than just pressing in a horizontal position, in a standing position. Um, it teaches the body to be slow and strong, even you know, some of the complicated lifting systems still make the athlete strong but slow. And since you're using two arms, two feet in a stable position all the time, it actually decreases the athlete's ability to be a stable athlete in unstable situations. So they can't exert the force or the strength that they're trying to. So does the powerlifting model mimic the sports that you guys are playing and coaching and trying to get the athlete stronger for? The body positions don't even look the same. So why do we train the entire off season to look like this for nine months and then ask them for three months to look like that? The problem with the Olympic lifting model, there are highly technical lifts where it can take 10, 15 years to perfect the proper lifting technique where you can exhibit the amount of strength and force that you want. And I don't have that much time as, an athlete, as a coach to perfect those lifts. We'll stu still do them a little bit, but it's not our main focus to develop uh, power with the athletes. Again, there are only two lifts, and everything in that system is designed to make those two lifts as strong as possible and as powerful as possible. And it's, again, not really great for teaching stability. So when an athlete is power cleaning or Olympic uh, snatching, if the weight's off center, we teach the athlete to drop the weight so they don't get injured. But I don't think too many sports allow you, if you're off center, off balance, to say, hold on, hold on, I'm not in the right position, let me do a do-over. Olympic training does allow you to do that. I mean, there is some fighting for uh, balance at times, especially in competition, but generally, if you're training in the off season, you don't want to injure your athletes, so you have them bail with the weight. Again, does your lifting in the off season mimic the sports that you are playing? A lot of sports, most sports, are basically played on one leg dominant, standing on one leg and using one arm. And it's almost every sport has a rotational component. So does our focus in our training focus on that type of lifting, or is it focused on just making an athlete's limit strength higher and higher? And the problems with the bodybuilding model. It's good for making muscles larger um, and increasing size and weight of your athletes. Most athletes don't need to be bigger and heavier, though. Um, it's generally also done with, with, for an overload fashion with machines. What that does is actually make the uh, um, athlete a lot more unstable. Because any time that you have a um, machine determining the path, whether it be hammer strength, nautilus, any of them that, uh, outside of some cable-driven machines, any time a machine is determining what the path is, the athlete doesn't have to stabilize that. They can exhibit more strength, but less stability. You're actually making the athlete develop strength they can never really use, and when they try to use it, they're going to get injured. So again, does your lifting mimic your sport? The answer is no. You might want to just think. I want to try to introduce some ideas today to get, get you uh, maybe on a little bit better path for what you're trying to create, which is generally better athletes. 
So what is functional training? How do I define it for our system? We're developing usable strength. That's it. I don't care if it's with dumbbells or medicine balls, stability balls, whatever, vanna discs. I don't care what the toys are or tools. I'm just concerned whether I'm making an athlete a better athlete and a stronger athlete in their sport. I want to make sure I'm not inhibiting anything that they're trying to do in their sport. So if they need to be faster, I want to make sure that I'm not making them slower in the off season. If I'm wanting them to be more stable on one leg, I'm trying to make sure that the lifting in the off season doesn't injure that. So in the gym, we make movements more precise and more stable before we even worry about strength. And the reason being is, uh, for the parents here, this will make a little bit more sense, but would you hand the keys to a 12-cylinder Lamborghini to a 16-year-old who's never driven before? And that's kind of like what we do a lot of times with strength athletes in our strength programs, is we make those muscles stronger and stronger and stronger, but we never teach them how to stabilize, balance, um, or actually use that strength. And that's why injuries, in my belief, is uh, on the rise in sports today. Then after we teach the athlete, or in conjunction with that, while we're making the athlete more stable and a better under, have a better understanding of their body, we make them stronger. After that, we're going to make them move quicker and make them more powerful. But more power without control is useless. You're just going to end up with injured athletes. So for us, functional strength training for sports focuses on muscle systems or kinetic chains. We don't do isolation exercises. We will not work on biceps. Unless somebody comes to us uh, with an injured bicep or an injured muscle, we don't go back and develop that muscle. We always work it in conjunction with other muscle groups. Do we focus uh, on movement patterns and coordination? So again, we're going to move a lot more. Lifting, watching us lift or watching our athletes lift, it's all about whether they're moving correctly. They don't stand still very often. For us, we focus on the athlete having fun and giving more effort. So if the athlete is having fun, they will try more. They'll want to do one more set, one more rep, come back next week and try even harder. When's the last time you guys had an athlete that looked at you and said, Coach, Coach, I really think I could do another set of squats because I didn't hit the last ones as deep as I should have? Or are they just glad to get the things over with and move on to the next one? When's the last time your athlete said, can I do one more set of pull-ups because I think I can do them better? Or are they just getting through the program and you're hoping that the general strength translates into sport? Uh, all of our training has direct purpose. It makes sense to the athlete what they're doing. And I think that's one of the disconnects that we have in the weight room most of the time is, you're going to do squats, how is this going to help me in the, uh, on the field? I know I'll be stronger, but explain to me how this is going to help moving up and down. There's a disconnect to moving forward and back. So if we can give them a direct purpose, this exercise looks like what you do on the field. It's a little bit more functional for us, and it's a lot more um, applicable for them. And we challenge along with that the mind-body relationship. And what I mean by that is when you do functional strength training and you're required to stabilize on one leg or on a stability ball, athletes get very frustrated because they are athletes in their mind, so they should be able to do all this stuff. It should make sense to them. Their body, they should be able to tell their body to do something, and it doesn't. And it's actually frustrating when they say, why can I not balance on the stability ball, and they see you know, some 70-year-old lady doing the exercise with more weight and has no problem. There's a little bit of frustration there, but it's a challenge to most athletes. A lot of athletes get to where they are because they like the challenge and want to overcome that. So, it's a little bit different for them, and we like to challenge them and like to make them uh, unstable and unsuccessful at the beginning so they want to be more successful as they go on. 